Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have another episode brought to you by DLT Trading. Look them up for all of your knife and EDC needs, and today we're going to be taking a look at another cold steel. It's been a while since a cold steel has made its way to the channel. This one here is none other than the Cold Steel Large Voyager Drop Point Style. And before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 9.25 inches with a blade length coming in at 4 inches and a blade width of 1.19 inches. Blade thickness on this guy is 130 thousandths with a blade material of OS 10 a and a drop point style blade with a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 5.25 inches, and a handle thickness of 640 thousandths with a handle width coming in at 1.14 inches, a polymer handle material with a that good old strong triad lock. We have a user of a right or left hand tip up carry, a weight coming in at a very respectable 4.7 ounces for for 9.25 inches a knife 4.7 ounces is pretty darn acceptable in my books and a price of $84.99 which is pretty much in line with cold steel pricing um I don't think you're getting a huge deal but I don't think you're getting ripped off either so it's not too bad for what it is now let's take a look at some size comparisons here I have a couple cold steels to throw up there with that I think everyone will find helpful. Uh, my favorite cold steel of all time right here, the Cold Steel 8010. I, I love this design, love this knife, love that S35 VN steel on it. And then the Sapling Destroyer itself, the Cold Steel 4 Max Scout. And as you can see, we'll line these tips up as, as good as I can. Uh, kind of surprising results here. It's... It's it's actually a little shorter than the AD10 by just a just a hair, maybe really maybe the exact length is the AD10, and just a hair shorter than the Formax Scout. And as you guys know, the the Scout is a big big boy, so uh, not too far off from either one of those two. I think that's some pretty good size comparisons for you. And now let's get into this knife because while it may be close in size, it's very different in blade. Uh, what you have here, in terms of the actual blade itself, it's it's nothing too crazy. Uh, it's just that nice big drop point that you see on a decent amount of cold steel knives. But you have kind of a unique finish here. This is It's a stonewashed finish, but it's almost kind of like a frosted finish. It, it almost looks like it has that frosted effect on it, which I think looks pretty nice. Uh, very different. Obviously not the case with either one of the other two cold steels you saw there. So it, it's a nice little change up in blade finish. And that OS 10A is pretty decent stuff. I think cold steel, they do a really good job of the heat treating on that. Um, heat treatment in general from cold steel is, is usually a little better than, than other manufacturers, um, at least from what I've heard and seen. So worth noting. And in terms of the overall blade, it's, it's just a nice big functional blade with good jimping. Actually, very nice jimping. Gives you a lot of jimping for your thumb to bite into. So if you've got to really power through some hard cuts, you got that there. You have a nice strong tip up here at the end of the blade. Um, it, it definitely lives up to the name or to the brand of Cold Steel. Um, you know, this is the first Cold Steel I've had that, uh, th that is under new ownership. As you know, Cold Steel was sold. Under new ownership, they're kind of doing a little rebrand with some slightly different, uh, you know, Cold Steel logo and whatnot. Uh, so, so far, I don't see any issue with any of the changes they're making. They seem to actually really be listening to what... Uh, what Cold Steel fans want. They're bringing back older models. They're changing up some models. They're, they're, they're doing some different things. And I, I think that is, that, I think that's almost always a good thing. Um, the thumb stud on this knife is actually very nice. Placed in a just right spot. Um, has that nice texturing on the side. And uh, action that is worth Worth noting, we'll talk more of that when we get to the action, but uh, not your typical clunky cold steel action. So uh, we'll touch on that here in just a bit. But now let's talk about this handle. Um, ergos are very nice. It's a thick, long handle that I think will be appreciated by anyone with big hands, of course. Um, texturing is nice for the grip, but combined with a strong clip tension, 
Um, I hate to say it, but this is going to wreak havoc on your pants pockets. Uh, if you buy this knife, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely want to sand this area down here because this is some crazy strong clip tension. And uh, if you don't sand that down, you're going to eat up some pants pockets, uh, I, I think, rather quickly. Uh, definitely the biggest thing to be aware of with this knife. It's not a deal breaker because Cold Steel has the type of fans where if, they, if you like Cold Steels, you're going to buy them. And you probably already know about that anyway, so it's not the end of the world. But if you're not super familiar with Cold Steel, but you like the knife and want to try it... Um, I, there's nothing that screams to me, don't buy it. Just know about this and uh, sand that little area down for a little uh, smoother landing on that pocket clip to take it easier on your pants pockets. Um, other than that, the grip, I really do love the multiple grip positions on this guy. You can have kind of this general, you know, hammer grip right here that extends the blade out for you and works really well. Or this is more my jam right here kind of choked up a little your your hand is still protected pretty well with that big uh you know contoured area for a finger whether it be your index or middle i put my middle finger here and that keeps your hand from sliding up and you can really get some good control over that big four inches of blade so very nice grip there and then of course you can kind of do that reverse grip that works very well in this position um so a lot of grips to manipulate with this handle and i think it works very well um, and of course, the triad lock is, uh, is as good as it always is. Um, you break it and the blade falls down and we go into the action here. And this is a rather smooth action for a cold steel. Um, it's one where it still takes a little wrist, but not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. I, I, I apologize for having to move this out of the view of the camera sometimes, but I don't want to hit my tripod here. But just a little push and wrist. And it flies out. Let's uh, let's see here. Yeah, we'll get it. Maybe it takes a little more risk than I'm saying. There we go. But it's smooth. It doesn't quite have that hiccup between moving out of the triad lock and into the open position. It still takes some risk, as you saw, but it doesn't have quite that that weird uh, hiccup right around here. You still feel it, but it's much smoother much smoother and I have no reason to think that the lock is any weaker or any less secure as it always has been because of that so I don't see any issue there you break that lock it falls right down you can shake it shut you can easily one hand close this knife and it is just fun to whip this blade out so overall pretty nice and pretty smooth action and of course you can also always kind of just do that that actually feels pretty darn good the, due to the overall handle size and how you can just kind of put this in your hand and roll that blade out, that feels just as good as flicking it out in all honesty. It has that nice satisfying click and if you don't want to do that, quick little flip of the wrist and you got this out. Um, another thing you could probably do, probably could middle finger flick this. Oh yeah, yeah, it middle finger flicks pretty, you know, it's funny, when, when, as I was messing with this knife, something about a cold steel, it, it's not one of the first things that I gravitate to do with a cold steel is middle finger flick it, and that's because uh, back in the day, I tried middle finger flicking this guy and cut myself, not, not super bad, I didn't need stitches, but it was bad enough to, to kind of piss me off, so I stopped doing that a whole lot, but this one... This one you can definitely middle finger flick, and since it doesn't have that massive hiccup as it's opening with the triad lock, um, a, a little easier, a little more confident when I'm doing that middle finger flick on this guy. So that's nice to report, but again, whether you're thumb flicking it, or middle finger flicking it, or just slow rolling it, um, it's a pretty decent action. It's nicer than a lot of other cold steels I've handled in the past. The only one that probably is better than this um, is the AD10, and you, I've already said that's that's still my favorite cold steel. The AD10 is hard to beat. Um, but this here is a very solid offering from cold steel. It is one that I would recommend as long as you're aware of that clip tension area point. You want to sand that down before you go slide it in and out of your pockets. Um, otherwise, what you have here is a very attractive offering from Cold Steel at a reasonable price with a decent steel, great ergos. It's your typical Cold Steel, guys. There's not much changing. 
Um, I think they're also doing a better job of smoothing that action out. So overall, one I would recommend, one I'm very pleased with. Let me know what you guys think of this one. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.